won't last long. I don't care where. Just find a place. There's no choice. It's far, but I'm heading for Resurgum. Just a little while longer. Hang in there, Alyssa. Yes, please do. Well then. Alyssa. No, don't go off. She's going to live. She has to live. Please, Alyssa. You've got to live. Don't worry. I promise that I'll save her. It stopped? He certainly is an enigma, isn't he? He only recently arrived here. He's been through a lot. There's no need to worry. He'll definitely save Alyssa. Definitely? Yes. And we'll do our best, too. Besides... If you keep looking so sad, Alyssa will surely laugh at you. Oh, Dr. Kimishima, where are you going? You're absolutely right. Right now, I don't even deserve to be laughed at by her. I... I'll leave this to all of you. Alyssa? I'll be back. It's Naomi. I'm Dr. Kimishima. Are you all right? Take it down a notch, little guy. Talk to me. Oh, uh, excuse me. I was worried. It's okay. Has the FBI contacted you? I want information. Uh, right, yes. Uh, I've made arrangements to have it sent to us. Great. Send a helicopter over to take me back. And you won't get away. I swear I'll catch you. Dr. Kimishima, are you really all right? I'm fine. Let's sort out what's happening. Any new information? Uh, well, about that. We couldn't find any usable clues from the scene. We did obtain the signed delivery form, but... Go on. Right. Only your prints and the delivery persons were found. Here. Huh. You amaze me. You still don't get it, do you? Uh, what do you mean? Do you really think there aren't any clues to the bomber? Uh, did you figure something out? Of course I did. That's why I'm here. <sighs> why are you being so quiet all of a sudden? No, it's nothing. It's just that... Just what? It's like the old Dr. Kimishima I knew is finally back. That's enough of that, Agent. There's no time to lose. Little guy, let's go over the information that we have so far. Oh, uh, right. The revolutionary, Stephen Eldred, was not, in fact, the raging bomber. That's right. The real bomber placed an explosive inside a stuffed animal, and then sent it to you, Dr. Kimishima. Let's trace the delivery back to its source immediately. If we can find out where that package came from, we'll find the bomber, and then... There's no need for that. Huh? Well, why? Hmm. Don't you think there's someone much more suspicious? Who? I believe that the person who is most likely to be the bomber is... Indeed. The person who delivered the package is most suspicious. Then the raging bomber personally handed you the bomb? Isn't that too dangerous? I have proof. I got carbon dust on my hand when I signed for the delivery. That's because the delivery person said that the digital pad was broken. Aiden and Steven, the other victims that we examined, both of them also had carbon dust on their fingers. I see. That 
explains why the carbon was only on their dominant hands. Yes. In other words, the bomber killed the other two victims in the same way that I was targeted. The fact that the delivery person was female also points toward her culpability. What do you mean? Uh, don't you get it? Let me ask you this then. How did the bomber hide her true identity? She hired Stephen Eldred to make the bomb threats for her. But even this was a trap. That's because... Yes, she let Steven's voice go out unprocessed on purpose. What? So the bomber wanted us to think... Everything she did was an act, and we were fooled. We were all led to believe that the raging bomber was a young man. I see. If that woman is the bomber, then it all makes sense. Indeed. On the other hand, there's another mystery that we can't solve just yet. That is... Yes. The bomber was using the revolutionary character as a cover to protect herself. Why, then, would she kill him? Little guy. Huh? What? What happened to Alyssa's house? Oh, unfortunately, it completely burned. Then the building collapsed. It's useless as a potential crime scene now. I see. Then I'm going to investigate the revolutionary's room one more time. Again? Yes, but now I know what I'll be seeing. You look into those deposits. The ones into Stephen Eldred's accounts? Okay, I'll get started on that right away. I'm going to catch her. That's my only way to atone for what happened. I've investigated this room before. I can't just rush around now and expect to find new information. What we need now is more information about the raging bomber. If the same method was used to deliver the bomb here as was used to get the other bomb to me, the area with the most clues would be... Hmm. This is a human hair. It's about 40 centimeters long. No, it couldn't possibly be the revolutionaries. This needs further investigation. Hmm, right. If that woman delivered the bombs to both of us in the same fashion, then she would have left footprints at the entrance. Stephen was the revolutionary and was male. If the delivery person was female, her footprints would definitely be different. Let's look for footprints that differ from Stephen's. Yes, this footprint is definitely different in size and pattern from the others. Let's collect this print and send it for analysis. Here it is, the delivery form. If the bomber did send this, there's a chance that this form has some important evidence. That would be... Right. We may be able to lift some fingerprints from it. Tell me anything about this hair, little guy? Sure, give me a moment. Uh... Huh. What's the matter? Well, this hair is dyed black, but it's actually a red hair. Red hair? Can you tell if it belonged to the bomber? No, I'd need some DNA from the bomber to compare it to. Of course, but there's a good chance that this hair does belong to the bomber. Huh. Why is that? Uh, this is hardly conclusive evidence, but... Here's something you may not know, little guy. Only 2-3% to of people in this country are true redheads. It isn't a common color at all. So, how is this related to this case? Think about it. That hair's been dyed, hasn't it? Right, but... If that hair is the bomber's, as I suggest, what reason would she have to dye it? Um, it would be... Hmm, that's right. 
Having red hair is an obvious identifying feature. If there happened to be any witnesses, her identity would be easy to discover. Isn't it plausible to think that this might be why the bomber would dye her hair black? I see. That hypothesis does make sense. The dye used seems to be a temporary coloring agent as well. Hmm. So the dye is meant to be washed out. If that's the case, she could change her hair color with every delivery to create conflicting witness accounts. That would make her hair part of her costume as well. Yes, but until we can prove that hair belongs to her, this is all just speculation. I know. We need something to match her DNA with in order to do that. It's a decent theory, anyway. Let's keep gathering what information we can. Got it. I'll let you know immediately if anything else comes up. I found this. Can you analyze it, little guy? Huh. A delivery receipt. It's very likely. It hadn't even crossed my mind until now. Right. I'll send it to the lab, so it'll take a while. Uh, Dr. Kimishima, the results of the analysis on that delivery form have come in. Did they find anything? Sure did. There were two sets of fingerprints on the paper. One of them is Stephen Eldred, the revolutionary. He'd be the recipient. The other set belongs to somebody else. Well, common sense dictates that they'd have to belong to... Let's not start jumping to any conclusions. We need to find out who left those fingerprints. Huh. Yes, those two can be placed together. Little guy, could I bother you for a moment? Yes, of course. What is it? I want you to look at the fingerprints on the delivery form Stephen and I were presented with. Compare any prints you find that don't belong to either Stephen Eldred or myself. No problem. I'll just be a moment. <clears throat> what did you find? Are there any matches? A complete match. There's no mistake. These are from the same person. Good. This is proof of another important fact. Both forms have two sets of prints. One from the recipient, and another from... That's right. The other set of prints is from the person who delivered the package. If the fingerprints match on both forms, then the person who delivered the bomb to the revolutionary was... Uh, Dr. Kimishima. It turns out that this woman... Let me guess. She doesn't exist, right? Uh, right. But we've contacted all the delivery companies that work in this area. None of them can confirm having an employee that fits our description. And of course, none of them have any records of a package being sent to you that day either. Do you think the woman making the deliveries is the raging bomber? Hmm, I can't be sure yet. She might be another person being used like the revolutionary was. We'll figure that out as we continue with the investigation. Right. In any case, we'll need to keep that woman in mind. How about the fingerprints? Did you compare them to anything in the FBI's criminal database? Of course I ran them through the system. No matches, though. If that woman is the raging bomber, then she's a complete newbie. That's an awful thought. Someone with no criminal record at all, and she's already killed four people with these bombs. That seems to be the case. This might turn out to be one tough murder spree to end. It doesn't blow you up. It'll be okay. You might want to avoid saying things like that in the future. Oh. Oh. Uh, sorry. I... Anyway, we've figured out how she was delivering the bombs. Yes, let's try summarizing what we know of the events in this case. First, the bomber prepared a bluff to hide behind while she committed the crimes. That bluff was... Yes, the revolutionary, Stephen Eldred. The bomber had Eldred make the bomb threats over the phone. She had him use his own voice with absolutely no processing to attempt to conceal it. Because of this, the bomber misled us into believing that the killer was male. On the other hand, the bomber used the names of people close to the targets to send the packages. She did that to make her targets feel less suspicious about the deliveries, right? Yes. All the bombs were set to explode in close proximity to the target. It's likely that what triggered the explosion would have been... Indeed, if the bomb was set to go off when the package was opened, it would explain the wound patterns. Still, that's not what she did in my case. She used a time bomb for me. That does seem odd now that you bring it up. Why would she do that? It makes a lot of sense if you think about it. What's that supposed to mean? Don't you get it? It's because... How could I do that? 
she was thinking that far ahead. Let me ask you, investigator, if someone assisting the FBI appears in a tabloid, what's your by-the-book response? Um, we'd increase security around you to prevent the killer from striking at you. Exactly. In fact, the security at CIFM was heavier than usual. The bomber had to be sure that I would be killed by the blast. If there had been a baggage screening at the entrance and the lid was opened there, she predicted that her present would never reach me. I see. So that's why the package didn't go off the moment it was opened. Yes. And she even put a note inside the package. She wanted to ensure that I would be near the bomb when it went off. If it wasn't for Alyssa, I would have been. She's a tough one. This is the kind of mind we're dealing with. The question remains, was the woman who delivered the package the bomber or not? From the evidence we have, she's definitely the most suspicious character at this point. Still, this whole thing about taking such a risk to deliver the bombs herself. And if she was the bomber, wouldn't the revolutionary have noticed before he was killed? That's possible. However, that would only happen if the revolutionary knew her face. Huh? Think about what happened in Eldred's room. The bomber sent her messages via the computer. Perhaps the revolutionary only knew the bomber from the internet. Still, would somebody really deal with someone they've never even seen? Our technology gets better and better, but people can remain as naive as the day they were born. But why did the bomber kill the revolutionary in the first place? Oh, I had something to report. I almost forgot. Can you not suddenly yell like that? Yeah, sorry. It's about the revolutionary. We looked into his financial records. It seems there were periodic deposits into his accounts. These deposits perfectly coincide with another series of events. Really? Hmm. Let me guess. It was... Absolutely correct, Dr. Kimishima. <sighs> of course I am. Continue. Oh, yes. Uh, there were a total of four deposits. All of them were made around the same dates as the bomb threats. $5,000 for the first three times, and $10,000 for the fourth time. The last one was double the others? Oh, yes, there's no doubt about it. Hmm. After that deposit was made, the bomber targeted the one who made the threats for her. Could the change in the amount of money be related to the revolutionary's killing? True. We might be able to deduce something from these. I don't like to conjecture much, but I could try making some inferences. The revolutionary was receiving periodic deposits of large sums of money. It's most likely that whoever was making these deposits was... Indeed. I believe that it would have been the bomber herself who was using the revolutionary. In exchange, the revolutionary performed a service for the bomber, which was... Yes. The bomber paid him in advance to make the phone calls to deliver the bomb threats. But, according to Little Guy's information, there were four deposits. The last deposit was very different from the rest. That difference was... Yes. The amount of money was double the previous deposits. Now, what could explain this sudden increase in the payment amount? That's possible. Human avarice knows no bounds. It's possible that the revolutionary thought that he had an upper hand on the bomber. Using that, he may have tried to blackmail the bomber over his part in her plot. The fool. There is a plausible reason why he would demand an increase in his reward. That's right. He took out a loan in order to pay for the expensive guitar in his room. There's no way to know whether his arrangement with the bomber began before or after buying the guitar. But even so, nobody wants to live in fear of debt collectors. Still, any perceived dominance he had over the bomber would have been an error. I doubt the bomber even thought twice about murdering him. She seems like the type who is absolutely merciless to anyone who gets in her way. But the bomber did make one payment for more than the original amount. The reason for that must be... Yes. The revolutionary, after being paid twice his usual amount, made the fourth bomb threat. However, he wouldn't have known that he himself was the target of that threat. The bomber's clever. She had the foresight to make the fourth bomb threat before killing Eldred. 
Without that, HQ and I would have immediately noticed that something was different. She created this diversion to hide her intentions, making Eldred's murder seem like just another attack by the raging bomber. This is all starting to bring one more conclusion to light. Hmm, it's little guy. Did he find something out? Oh, Dr. Kimishima, thank heavens I could reach you. Calm down. What's the matter? We've made some progress into those deposits paid to the revolutionary. All four of them were made from a bank near Higgins Beach. Higgins Beach? That's not far. What about the security footage? Was the bomber seen by any of the cameras? It's no use. We've checked them all, but there's no conclusive footage we can identify. I see. It's all right, though. I know for sure that we're closing in on the bomber. We've gathered quite a lot of information now. If some of the facts we know are put together, maybe... Hey, little guy. I need this footprint analyzed. All right. Hang on a moment, please. I see. Did you discover anything? Yes. The footprint is 27 centimeters in length, so we should expect this person to be between 170 to 180 centimeters tall. The woman who delivered the bomb to me was about that tall. I see. Oh, I have also compared the pattern on the print to the FBI's shoe print database. Great. Can you narrow it down to a specific store? Well, there aren't that many stores that carry this brand, but it's still over a hundred. I can narrow it down, but it's going to take some time and a lot of effort. Well, do the best you can. I'm going to keep investigating. Understood. I'll contact you once I've found anything out. Yes. These facts can tell us something new. One of the footprints found in Eldred's room wasn't his. The type of shoe is sold in over 100 stores. It'll take us time to narrow down where it came from. On the other hand, let's consider the deposits that we believe the bomber made to the revolutionary. The four deposits were all made from a single bank near Higgins Beach. One fair assumption we can make based on these facts is that What could I do with that? Concentrate. That's right. If we search for stores that sell these particular shoes near Higgins Beach, we'll at least narrow down the number of stores that we have to investigate. Hey, little guy. I want you to look into something. Sure. What is it? I need you to search for stores in the Higgins Beach area that sell shoes matching that footprint. Hmm. That would be more efficient than checking out all 100 stores. Can you get on this right now? The sooner we do this, the better. Got it. I'll search through the database we have on hand. Huh. Well, how many stores fit the criteria? Uh, one. Dr. Kimishima, only one store. Amazing. Can you search through their sales records? I'll try. <sighs> We're following your tracks. This store has the records we need. Dr. Kimishima, I've accessed the security camera footage from when the shoes were purchased. Good. Run it through your profiling algorithms and let's search for these parameters. First is her gender. The person we're searching for is... Right. Our most probable suspect at this point is a woman. Okay. Next. What about her age? Let's see. She would be... Well, we can't say anything for sure about that. All right. What about her nationality? Hmm. Her nationality. We can't say anything about that either. All right. How about her height? Hmm. We predicted her height at... Right. We suspect that she's between 170 and 180 centimeters tall. Ah, I remember now. Were there any other distinguishing features about the person we're searching for? The characteristic that would stand out the most is... Ah, oh, that's right. She supposedly has red hair. Okay, then. I'll start searching for people under these conditions. But we don't have any substantial proof that the delivery person is the bomber. That's right. We're going to have to work based off of assumptions right now. If we're wrong, we'll learn why we're wrong. We just have to keep going, little by little. True enough. Huh? What's the matter? 
have a hit, Dr. Kimishima. If someone meets the search criteria, tell me. Uh, right. Uh, just a moment. Her name's uh, Sandra Lieberman. She's 30 years old. She lives in Higgins Beach and bought the shoes with a credit card. Bingo. Send me her address immediately. I'm going to go and check myself. I'll know if it's her if I can see her face. Uh, right. Uh, Dr. Kimishima, please be careful, all right? There's no telling that the bomber's not going to be... <laughs> He's such a worrier. Still, I have to go there for myself. This address is what we think might be the Raging Bomber's home. Hmm, I should make sure I'm ready for anything, just in case. 